know you liked the joke, but I didn't think you'd be moving in. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, what does the shop do with clothes at this time, anyway? Well, I would like to pop home and Mum's going to see his wife. How oh, is she? Mm, not sure. Not brilliant, I think. That's what I'm from. See ya. See ya. There you go, love. You should be at work. Never mind about that. Come home to do some washing and that. Well, I can do that. No, you can't. You just concentrate on getting better. You need your rest. Well, Jackie said she saw everything out. Yeah, well, our Jacqueline's already got two jobs, hasn't she? I've only got the one. And you've got the florists. Will you stop worrying about that? Florists? Jean's coping. Well, at least you've got Beth to help you. Hope she's still pulling her weight. Yeah. Yeah, of course she is, yeah. Well, until this, I could keep an eye on her when you weren't around. Don't let her take advantage of you just because she's Lynn's sister. No, I won't. Don't worry. Now, look, can I get you anything else? Fancy a bowl of soup or something? No, I'm fine. You sure, love? It's no trouble, you know. The, uh, doctor will be here any minute. I don't want a doctor. Yeah, well, I think you do, love. You're not getting any better. Well, I don't want a doctor. Well, I want him. I want you better, Dee. Mix one part of liquid with six parts of water Mom. and stir... You frighten the life out of me. You're a nervous wreck. <sighs> you made me jump, that's all. All right, bye-bye, Emily. But look, will you put Matthew back on, please? Hello again. <laughs> I think it's still a bit too cold for the beach. We'll have to see. Now, look, you be a good boy and look after Emily for me, all right? All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Matthew. Hello. You don't usually phone the kids midweek. I often phone them midweek. Max, this whole idea of us having them while Susanna's in the States, it just isn't practical. I can't be their mother for 12 months. They're my kids, for God's sake. There'd be a damn sight less trouble than your parents. Oh, well, they're moving out soon anyway. What I'm trying to say, Max, is I can't cope with Matthew and Emily full time. You love children. You always said you wanted more. <laughs> more of our own. Max, I'm talking about basic domestic things. Where will they sleep? We've no room. And what about schools? They go to private schools miles away, and I'll take them there. <laughs> you won't. I'll take them. You, you say that now, but I know what'll end up happening. I'll take them every day. All right, then, well, we'll change schools. What's the problem? After all the fuss you make getting them in there, and what if Susanna and Andrew decide to stay over there? I'll be stuck with three kids for heaven knows how long. At least they'll be where they belong, with their real father. I'm sorry, and I do understand, but I just can't do it, Max. Can't do it or won't do it? If you want me to say it, won't. If we have Matthew and Emily here, we'll have to put off having another child of our own. Max? Max, we haven't finished. Well, what time will you be back? Um, no, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, somebody's got to be in this evening for Thomas. Mum and Dad are playing Whist over at Blundell Sands, and I've got to see a client. Ooh, tonight? Uh, no, I've got a table meeting. <laughs> but my appointment's fixed, 6.30. Well, that's another reason I wouldn't be able to cope, isn't it? Because how would I be able to run my already struggling business? What's the verdict then, Doctor? And the verdict, Mr. Dixon, is you could have saved me a bit of time if you'd have brought up the surgery instead of calling me out. Oh, sorry about that. What's the score, then? There's nothing wrong with her physically. She's fit and healthy. But she's been terrible, Doctor. And she's getting worse. Is there any reason why she should be down? Is she depressed about anything? No, not really, no. Everything all right with the family? Yeah, fine. How about your marriage? Why? Is that what she said? I'm asking you, Mr Dixon. Well, no, you know, everything's just as it's always been, just normal, like. Mind you, she may have been overdoing it a bit round of work. She's just opened a new shop, you know. Well, anyway, I prescribed complete rest for a week or so, and I've left a prescription for antidepressants. Antidepressants? You mean them Valium things? <laughs> no, not Valium, Mr. Dixon. A week's course won't do any harm. In fact, I'm sure it'll do the trick. Goodbye. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? I felt embarrassed. Why? I didn't know what to tell him was wrong with me. How can I say I've got a cold that won't go? Hey, hey, never mind all that. He says you're to rest for another week or so. 
How can I do that? There's the shop in here. And... Hey, hey, hey. Me and Jean will manage that between us. Ron, you work long enough hours as it is. Then you've got your legion work, and that gets busier and busier, doesn't it? I said I'll manage, didn't I? I mean, it's not as if you're going to be ill forevermore, is it? being sick, can you? No, it's not that. Or it's just that you didn't want me to get the florist, and now I've made a mess of it and dumped it on you. I don't go down to the Legion like I should. And... Look, will you stop worrying about all of that? <laughs> I felt dreadful about pushing you out the other week. I did. What? Well, I did. It was me that drove you to go drinking on the quiet with your mates. Oh, don't be soft. Don't be soft. Blackpool. It's hardly anything between us. Can't even be a proper wife in that way either. Oh, God. Oh, Ron, I'm sorry. Hey, come on, love, come on. You're making far too much of this, you know. Loads of people go through bad patches. Hey, we still get on now, don't we, eh? Can you get off? I'm just being stupid. I'll be fine. I'll see you later. Good girl. I don't know how you can do this. What? Acting as if everything's normal. Messing about with watering cans and all the rest of it when he's threatened to kill us. Shh, shh. I'm trying to lead a normal life. I'm trying to do things I like doing, things that I used to do, like gardening. How can we live a normal life when he's here? I still think we should tell the police. No. Mum! No! You're half crippled from what he did to you the other day. What's he going to do next time? There won't be a next time. He was upset, drinking. Oh, so every time he gets upset or has a whiskey, you're going to accept him beating you up, are you? He only had a drink because we'd invited people round. Mum, he doesn't need excuses to hurt you. He'll never stop hitting you. Look, what about Rachel? We'll keep an eye on her when your father's around. What are we expected to do? Take turns in going to sleep? If you did anything to Rachel, I'd kill him. Hello. How are you? Hello. It'd be too late by then. Do you think it's going to rain? Oh, for God's sake. Are you trying to tell the whole world? Mum, the only people I want to tell are the police. OK, then I will. No. Mum, you're covered in bruises. You've got evidence. He's been out of prison for, what, three months? And he's already committed the same offence again. This time, he'll be put away for even longer. I don't know. Well, we'll call the Shackletons, then. They'll make sure he never touches us again. They'll move us yet again, that's all. Back to some squalid hostel, and then he'll find us again, and... Well, we've got to do something, Mum. Love, he was angry when he made those stupid threats. He wouldn't do anything like that. Kill his own wife and daughters. Not your dad. Beth, not your dad. Shop! Bev, what are you doing, love? There was nobody watching the till. We could have been robbed. Who's left these here? I did. You did? You're not getting off anywhere, are you? I've left me mum's. What for? I thought you were all right there. I couldn't stay. Hey, hey, hey. What's happened? Oh, we had a row and she just kept going on at me. Oh, what was so serious that you had to leave home? She just kept getting on me back. I had to go, Ron. Come on, love. It was only a little row, surely. Can't you apologise and go back? No. I'll find somewhere else to live. Where? Hiya. Hiya, love. Um, OK. Hey, my mum's told you to sling your hook. If you must know, I decided to leave. And it mightn't have happened if you'd have been able to keep your big mouth shut. Oh, don't blame me. Mr Lachlan? Yeah? 24p, please. You were the one who told me your latest fella was married. Why shouldn't I tell me, mum? Why did you have to mention it? 
She thought she'd be interested, that's all. Ta, oh, seeing as you're up to your old tricks again. You know she doesn't like all that. You've only yourself to blame. See ya. Yeah, it's all in. Will you let me find a flatter on? Just a minute. What was all that she said to your mum? I don't listen to her half the time, don't know. Come on, you know what I mean. All that bit about going out with a married man again. I don't want to tell you about all of that. How oh, don't you? Well, I think I should be told, don't you, Bev? You said I was the only married fellow that you'd ever been out with. I didn't want you thinking the worst of me, Ron. I mean, it was ages ago, and it was nothing like you and me. It was sordid. So, uh, who was he then? All right, Ron. Hello, Mick. Just the East Lynch, mate. Uh, 20 p, please. Hey, how's your Didi? Oh, she's fine, thanks. Not wrong with her, really. He just needs a bit of rest, you know. Tell him I was asking about it. Yeah, we'll do, mate. See you later. Turn on, man. Well, you were saying? It's like I told you. It's nothing to do with you and me. It's nothing like you and me at all. Beverly. Well, when did you have to tell your mother she was seeing a married fella? Just slipped out. Well, Mum knows we've been seeing a lot of her lately, and I told her. Well, I wish you hadn't. Why did you have to side with Bev? I'm not siding with her. I just want you and your family to get on. I hate all this falling out. Oh, she'll be better off in her own place. She can have as many fellas round as she likes, then. But what's she going to do in the meantime? Well, that's not my problem, Frank. Lynn, she's your sister. You can't just leave her out in a limb like that. I just wish she'd stayed right away from here. Look, why don't we give her a bed for a week? Until she finds somewhere. Are you serious? If it means your family not falling out for good, yeah. Come on, then. It's only for a week. It only took a week to tempt my ex-husband into bed with her. I'm not your ex-husband. And your Bev's not much older than our Sammy. She's no danger to you and me. Yeah, but our Alison's not that keen on her. Never has been. And you know she's finding it hard to settle. Aunt Katie will mind if she moves into her bedroom for a week. Yeah, but you don't know Bev like I do. She's trouble. Always has been. Do you think maybe you've just blown it all up? Eh? I mean, I know she spoiled things for you and your ex fella, but... Well, she's your sister, isn't she? Why not give her a chance? I don't know. You're as bad as Ron Dixon, you are. Hey? Well, you're both so patient with her. I suppose I better go round and tell her. No. Let's both go and tell her. And we'll have uh, no more of this falling out, shall we? And six makes to five. Thanks, love. I'll get those spaghetti hoops down, or do you fancy a coffee? The only thing I fancy is a little talk with you. Here's your newspaper, Mr. Dixon. Uh, excuse me, uh, what time do you call this? I'm sorry. My little empire here was founded on this free paper, you know. A little bit of buying here, a little bit of selling there. Now, how can I be expected to catch up on all the bargains if I don't get my copy first thing in the morning? Well, perhaps you don't realise how many I have to deliver. Ah, I suppose so. I was wondering what that pile of papers was doing outside of yours. Funny job for a girl like you, if you don't mind me saying. At, uh, 45, please. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm three pence short. Oh, it's OK. Drop it in next time you're passing. And, um, maybe I'll get my copy first thing in the morning next week? Yes. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Ron. Hi, hi, Frank. Is that Bev about? Yeah? Bev, you wanted. Hi, love. Hiya. Eh. Uh, me and Len, we've been talking, and uh, we've decided you can stay at our house till you sort yourself out. Really? Uh, as long as you get it into your head, it's not permanent. Now, the main thing is, I don't want you two arguing. I want us all to get on. Well, that's solved a few problems, hasn't it? Well, that depends on her. Well, I wouldn't have to put Frank out if you hadn't gone snitching to me, ma'am. I think she's got a right to know what you're up to if you're staying in her house. All right, all right. I think we can forget that now. Ron doesn't want us rowing in here. Well, I'll forget it if she will. Right. I think we all know where we stand now. Have you seen any flats yet? Give us a chance. Ron said he'd help if he can. Right, uh, well, you might as well have your own key then. That's our Sammy's old one. You sure? Yeah, sure. Come and go as you like. As long as you don't go sneaking any of those married fellas of yours in, eh? Hey, hey. Uh, sorry. Well, I better go and get this bed sorted out. Well, I'd help, but I've got work to do. <laughs> yeah, get on with it. You caused poor Ron enough hassle today. See you, Ron. Ta da, love. Can you tell us where to put through this place? One thing, uh, no funny business while you're staying okay. in ours. Funny business? You know what I mean? Like barging in on me when I'm in the shower or anything like that. Cross me off, Frank. Right. See you, Ron. See you, Frank. I'm going to sort that stock out. It's 
excuse me, love. Aren't you Maxie Farnham's old lady? I beg your pardon? You aren't, aren't you? You're the ex-Mrs Farnham. Still am Mrs Farnham. Oh, sorry. What are you doing around this part? Just visiting, are you? Of course, it's Mr Dixon, isn't it, from next door? Yeah, that's me. I remember you at the barbecue the other year. Oh, yeah. 36, love. There you go. There's a change. Tell me, uh, how's them two little monsters of yours getting on? Bet they're growing up now, eh? <laughs> Fun, thanks. Bye. Yeah, till our love. Nice to see you again. Stuck up, flaming little. Bev! You must be ready to call it a day, are we? Oh, I wish I was. I've got another load to deliver yet. I don't know why a girl like you can't find an easier job than this, though. Well, it's a long story. Anyway, see you later. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, someone sounds happy. Do they? Hey, thanks again for minding the kids, sir. Nah, no problem. So how'd it go, then? How do I walk up? Yeah, the night's in with Marianne. <laughs> That was brilliant. You want to try it yourself sometime? Oh, thanks very much. Remind me to ask Marianne next time I see you, won't you? No, you know what I mean. Isn't the time you're looking out for someone for yourself? Get out there, get looking. Now, look, what about that other one? She looks like she could do with a good night out. Oh, what was she seeing me? Don't underestimate yourself, Sin. Ah, oh, well, I'm glad to see you and Marianne are doing OK anyway. You know what, Sin? I never thought I'd feel like this again. Never thought I'd get married again after Josie walked out. Married? You haven't got divorced yet. Yeah, we will be. And there's nothing to stop us. Well, don't you think you're pushing it a bit? No worries, Sin. The mood I'm in, I'm ready to propose. There you go, now. Keep you posted. Are you still at it? Do you want a cup of tea? No, thanks. There's a lot to do. I can find you a job if you want. No, thanks. I think I'd rather do my revision. Mm, thought you might. You get on. Evening. Oh, hello. How's the garden and stuff coming along? Any good? Yes, thanks. Hey, listen. This stuff's a bargain, but it's a bit dangerous, you know. Don't let the kids need it, will you? Right. Are you still sore? What? Oh, my rheumatism. Um, yes, it'll get better when the weather's warmer. So, uh, your fella not into gardening, then? No, not Trevor. It was always me that was after the garden. The uh, marketplace. Oh, thanks. I'll, I'll take it. Are you getting on, then? Any good? I once picked beetroots. It's about the same. Boring and hard work. Oh, well, not long now till you know me. I've got another load to deliver yet. Oh, uh, See you. See ya. Hey, don't forget the bungalow's empty. Hey, listen, I can do that for you, you know, if your rheumatism's hurting. No, no, it's all right. I, I don't mind, honestly, God, I've got nothing else on. Look, my husband will be home soon. I, I don't think he'd like to think a stranger was working on his garden. Oh, well, clean is hardly a stranger, is he? I know, but he, he's just a bit funny about yeah. things like that. Oh, well, uh, no hard feelings, eh? Oh, hello. I was just delivering this. Oh, thanks, thanks. Bye. <laughs> Did you see that? See what? <laughs> Mrs. Farnham came to the door of her house just as I was delivering. I don't know who was more embarrassed, me or her. Well, what have you got to be embarrassed about? I used to be there now, me. She used to be my employer when I had a proper job. Now I have to go through all this embarrassment for slave wages. Yeah, well, it's still a job, though, isn't it? I've got to get something else. Till then, I've got to go on delivering all this crap. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the hand at this site if you want. Would you? Yeah, I don't mind. Nothing else on. Give us your bag. Oh, it's really kind of you. Well, if you can't help a neighbour. Hello, Susanna. Come in. I just called round for a quick word with Max. Oh, uh, you two aren't off out, are you? Oh, no, just me. Business. Well, Max is through in the garden. I'll go and get him. No, no, I'll go out to him. No trouble. Actually, I'd prefer to talk to him alone. OK. Go on through.
Hello. What are you doing here? Brought the children? We're at home with Andrew. What the hell were you doing the other day? Oh, don't play the innocent Max. You barged into Andrew's rehearsal, laying down the law about my children. Our children? And I didn't just barge in there. I went to see him to tell him of my wishes of our children's future. You embarrassed him and you embarrassed me. Oh, sorry. Is it all off between you two, then? I called round to tell you that the children are going to Boston with us. Well, I'm sorry, Susanna, but I can't allow that. You and Laurence Olivier can do what you like. I think it would be best if the children stayed here with Patricia and me. And uh, what does Patricia say about this? I can see it in her face every time the children are discussed in front of her. She doesn't care about them. She certainly won't want them for a whole year. We are still discussing that position. You mean you're still trying to persuade her? That's her job to think of. How will she cope with her precious advertising career with three children hanging round her neck? No, Max. I think you might be on your own here. The children stay here with me. We'll see. I mean it, Susanna. I want them here, whatever it takes. So what are you doing skulking around the back here all the time? Just washing these. You mean you're avoiding me? Avoiding you? What for? You know what for. About what Lynn said to your mum about this married fella. Mm, yeah, that. Yeah, that. Bev, I'd like to know a little bit more, please. There's nothing wrong. It was just some bloke who... Well, he took advantage of me. What, you mean he raped you? Oh, no, nothing like that. It was ages ago, and he just sort of impressed me in that, you know, nice car and money, and... Well, I was mad going with him. I've always been ashamed of what happened. What did happen? Oh, you don't want to know the details, surely? No, what happened to this married fella? What's well, history, Ron? I'd like to know. I found out and he got divorced. Look, I know I was wrong not telling you. I knew you would have understood, but now I've got it spoiled all by lying to you. Will you forgive me? Please. Just wish you'd have told me, that's all. I'm sorry. Do you want to finish it? I mean, I'd understand. No, of course I don't, but... Won't be a minute. But I don't want anybody finding out about us either. And Dee Dee must never, ever know. Listen, I'm awfully sorry. I still owe you for that gardening stuff. Uh, well, tomorrow night be all right. Uh, yeah, well, I am a bit short, so I'll call round. All right. See you then. Bye-bye. All right, Sam. All right, Frank. All right, mate. All right, Frank. Sorry I'm a bit late getting to see you, mate, but everyone just knocked off work. What is it? Your post from this morning. I just managed to stop the post he put into the old letterbox. Cheers, mate. I keep meaning to get things redirected, you know. I could put a note on the door for if you want. Oh, that'd be great, that, Frank. Cheers, mate. Have you seen uh, how much the old place is going for? No. I know uh, Patricia's parents are interested in it, though. Yeah, it was in the house for sale page. You know, the free sheet. Fletcher's estate agents offers around 46 grand. You what? You're joking, aren't you? No, that's what it had. Have a look at yourself. Oh, no.
Can I have a word, please, Max? Uh, certainly. What can I do for you? Well, for a kickoff, you can tell me why your firm is selling my bungalow for a lousy 46 grand. Well, that's the valuation that my firm put on it for the building society. It's worth more than that. I paid 50 odd thou on it. That was a few years ago. The building society forced me to give it up because I was 4,000 pounds in arrears on the mortgage. And now they're going to sell it for nearly 10 grand less than I paid for it. Look, I'm sorry, Mick, but that's the way that things go. The building societies want to get rid of repossessions ASAP. That's why they passed them over to us. Oh, so you can pass it on to your father in law? Oh, come on. I mean, the place is advertised. My father in law's got as much chance as the next man. Yeah, well, it's still a carve up, Max. It's all wrong. I agree with you, but it's been happening everywhere for the last two years. But I got the money back in the long run, you know. I mean, I only had 22 years left on the mortgage. I'm sorry, that's the way it goes. Now, look, if you'll excuse me, please. Brilliant. All that money paid. Right down the drain. Hi. Hiya. Long time no see. How's things going at the loop? Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Your friend and me are not going to go bankrupt just yet. Fletcher's contract is still safe. Glad to hear it. God almighty, Jimmy. These figures are ridiculous. I mean, no wonder the takings are down. Yeah, all right, all right, I know. But what can I do, eh? Force the punters in at gunpoint, or what? I don't know. Maybe we should start advertising again. Or do, like, a Spanish fiesta thing like we did at Christmas. Yeah, we could. And it'll cost a bomb, won't it? Are you sure no one's creaming us off again, Jimmy? Look, I got rid of all the tea leaves, didn't I, eh? And I'm watching this new lot like a hog, aren't I? There's no chance, I'm telling you. Yeah. Evening. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. <sighs> what a pleasant surprise. Must be six weeks since I last seen you. Should have told me you were bringing your boyfriend. Or someone else's boyfriend. So what's he doing, he? I need a word. Have you had a good look through the accounts recently? Or have you and your friend been too busy drinking the profits? Hey, do you mind? I pay for any drinks that I have here. If you mean by that, have we noticed the midweek takings are down? Yes, we have. So what's to be done? At this rate, we won't be making a penny. Well, we were just discussing that, weren't we, Jimmy? Yeah. And I reckon that we should be starting these what's-its. Karaoke nights. Karaoke? You'll be suggesting bingo next. This isn't some crappy working men's club, Jimmy. I want to build up a good, upmarket, hardcore of membership. Yeah, well, go on, then. I'm all ears. That's where Brian comes in. Brian! Brian and I have been discussing setting up a small health club on the premises. You know the sort of thing. Saunas, weight training gear, um, perhaps a couple of sunbeds, a masseuse... A oh, manager. I see. So, uh, you don't want a disco dancing cyber club anymore? Do you know how much we spent on this lot? And now you just want to be... No. You've got us wrong. We want the health club in addition to the nightclub. One set of clientele attracts the other. Well, it's a nice idea. There's just one big problem. No space. Ah, no problems. We've discussed that, and we reckon that... Look, what's with all this we? I didn't know you two were partners. I don't remember me being in on the discussions. Well, you are now. As you know, Barry, I've been wanting to set up a health club round here for ages, and uh, Joe and I reckon that we've cracked the problem of space. We simply knock through over there and take over the caretaker's flat. You what? Sinbad's flat! Right. That's it. I've had enough. Nobody touches that flat. But it's ideal. It also happens to belong to me. Not 50%, 100%. And my caretaker, who looks after the rest of me property, lives there. Well, Barry, like it or not, something's got to be done. Yeah, well, we'll see about that, won't we? Ah, oh, come on, Terry. One night out's not gonna kill you. I'm knackered. But you're still knocking the Zeds out while I was up early this morning. Well, you cheesed off being on your own. I just want to get home, have something to eat and put my feet up in front of the telly, all right? Yeah, but you're going to end up like me, aren't you? Like, how are you going to feel being like a 14 stone couch potato? Mega spud. I'm not joking, you know. Hi. Talking to me? Well, who else do you think I'm talking to? Yes. Listen, all this health club business, Joe Alsall and you and everything. Where does that leave our Trace? I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Um, what's it got to do with your Tracy? I'll tell you what it's got to do with it. A few months ago, our Tracy was the bee's knees. You were promising her everything. Salon's here, salon's there. Now it looks as if she's been dropped. No, Tracy's still one of my employees. Oh, is she? Well, I thought it was more than that. It was never more than that. Oh, right. Oh, not now that you've found someone else you can suck up to, eh? Like Joe Alsall. <laughs> Do you know something? I wish I'd never met the Corkill family. In fact, if I'd have known what came as a package with Tracy, 
She'd never set foot inside my salons. Ponce. Oh, come on, Teddy. Life's too short. We're missing out. Well, it looks like you're right, Terry. It's a small leap from the mains. Probably up to the six. So what are you going to do about it, then? I'll give the officer a call now, see if we can get the water poured out. All right, great, thanks. Look, I'll be here at seven. All right, thanks, Max. All right. Come on, it's boring just waking and then dusting around. Oh, all right, then. How about the swan? Oh, come on, I want a night out. I want a night with the living dead. Well, I thought that's where you went when you wanted a few pints. You want to do, don't you, tonight? I want to change. I want Barry's place. Oh, hey, I don't know. Oh, tell. Come on, mate. We haven't been anywhere. Yeah. Oh, well, what? At least we won't be on our own, eh? I know. Uh, I tell you, um, I tell you what, I'll go and get ready later and uh, nice. I'll meet you out here. Right? Right? Yeah, yeah, all right, sir. Hey, don't forget your cup and off, Kex. All right, Sally. <laughs> uh, did you get all your papers delivered then? Oh, yes, I did, thank God. Good. Thank you very much for helping me last night. Oh, I didn't mind. I enjoyed the change. Now I dread the next load arriving. Oh, I knew I had something to tell you. I've heard about another job that's going. Well, it's better than walking the streets and dumping heavy papers around, you know. Is it cash in hand? Well, definitely, yeah, no problem with the social. It's putting leaflets into envelopes. Well, the money's not brilliant, but it's got to be better than delivering the free sheets. Who do I have to contact? Well, don't you read any of the papers you deliver? It's in an advert on the back of this week's issue. <sighs> Thanks. Well, I think I might just have one copy left somewhere. Hello, Anna. Oh, hello, Max. Hello. It's a pity you don't still work for him, isn't it? Oh, we fell out. Well, I didn't get on with his wife. Oh. And now I can't get a job as a nanny anyway. Mm. Is that what you came over here for in the first place, to do nannying? No, not really. I came over to study and then realised that I couldn't manage without working, so I had to drop out. Mm. Uh, now just about any good job would cheer me up. Mm. Anyway, I must go. OK. Oh, uh, listen, um, do you fancy a night out tonight? Me? Well, me and Terry are going to La Luz, and, well, I just thought if you wanted to come along, you're more than welcome. Well, it's... Well, it's just for a few bevies and a bob and that, you know. Well, it, it's... I mean, it's really well, very kind of you. That's okay. It's just that uh, normally I like to stay... Yeah, here. that's all right. Look, uh, well, the offer's always open if you change your mind. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. Right, I've just uh, eased the hinges off a bit. Should be all right now. Oh, thanks, Dad. Well, I think it's about everything, isn't it? So, uh, I'll just pack up my bits and be on my way. Oh, by the way, where's the lovely Margaret today? Sent her home early. Oh. What, uh, business that bad? Oh, it'll pick up. Yes, that's the spirit. Hi. Hello. Just to let you know, I won't be home for supper tonight. Oh, right, fine. I have a client over Thornton Way, so I've arranged to see Matthew and Emily. You only saw them at the weekend. Ah, oh, evening, Max. Hi. Uh, so, look, don't worry about any food. I'll just make myself a sandwich and I'll get off. Oh, I've just heard. Uh, your offer on the bungalow has been accepted. So you'd better get in touch with your solicitors. <laughs> that's marvellous. Oh, Dad, that's <laughs> wonderful. Oh. It really is. <laughs> right. I'll be off. Have a nice meeting. Is it just me, or did he seem rather less than enthusiastic? He's got other things on his mind at the moment. Oh. So he's still determined to have the kiddies while Susanna's away? He's so stubborn, Dad. It's all emotional. He doesn't even think about how it would affect us as a family. Forgive me, my darling, but could it be you being a bit stubborn? You have got something of a track record for it, you know. Not this time, Dad. I'd pack up this business tomorrow if we were going to have another baby. But with Matthew and Emily here, I, I couldn't run a career or even think about having another baby of my own. Ah, oh, come on, Terry. Bye, Emily. Sit back, yeah. Take a look at that. What do you think? There's a check at the bottom line. £3,500. Where'd you get this? It's my compo, the criminal injuries thing. You know, I got beat up in the cab. Oh. All right, Bing. All right, Bing. Do you mean it's taken them two years to pay you out? Oh, if you got this the other week, you wouldn't have lost a bungalow. Yeah, I know, it's sickening, isn't it? Still, look on the bright side. 
Yeah, well, claim a little debt, HP and that. And then I might have a few hundred over to uh, buy a nice little engagement ring. Oh, so you've proposed to her? It's a bit quick, wasn't it? Don't wank on. Give us a chance. I haven't asked her yet. No, I thought I'd go into town tomorrow and uh, pick up the ring first. Well, picking the ring without her is a bit risky, isn't it? Simbad, where's your sense of romance? Look, she'll take one look at the ring and that'll be that. I mean, she always said I should be a bit more impulsive, you know what I mean? <laughs> this could not have come at a better time, mate. See you later. Yeah, see ya. Oh, hello again. Oh. Uh, give young Matthew and Emily my love, won't you? Thanks. Oh, Max, mm -hmm. are you in a big hurry? Look, I... I wonder if I can have a word. Oh, yes, yes, of course, um, the bungalow. No. No, actually, it's, um, it's about Patricia. This business of having your kids here, it's, it's just tearing her apart. Well, what do you think it's doing to me? Couldn't you two just sit down and talk it through? Well, honestly, David, I, I don't see what there is to discuss. Um... Susanna is taking my children thousands of miles away, where they'll be under the influence of some totally unreliable actor. Can't Patricia see my concern? It's obvious. Yes, but surely you can see that having those kids here is, is going to have far more effect on her life than it is on yours. So Patricia thinks. Well, it's funny. Why is everybody suddenly uh, an expert on the welfare of my children? They're not. It's just that Patricia I runs out. I'll She's get got... Jean round later with her version. Oh, don't be silly, Max. Look, all I'm trying to do is to get you two to sit down and have a talk. We don't want to interfere. But that is exactly what you are doing. I, I need some space around here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Obviously, we've uh, overstayed our welcome. I'll make some arrangements and we can... No, look, I'm... I'm sorry. No, 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 that's perfectly all right, Max. Don't... Message understood. I'll, uh... I'm, I'm sorry I interfered. How is Dina? Well, the doc gave her these antidepressant things, you know, but they don't seem to work so well. We just have to wait and see now. Mm. Well, I hope she improves, mate. Anyway, Lynn's out of mum's. The kids are out. I'm on my own with Bev, so I'm off for a pint. I don't want Lynn getting worried. Hey, she's not that keen on me being on my own with a little sister. What's that then? I've told her she's being soft, but <sighs> a few years back, uh, she broke up Lynn's marriage. Bev had a thing with Lynn's husband, and it caused ructions. I don't tell anyone I told you that. It's all hush hush. Lynn would kill me if she knew. Brilliant plan, and eh? we're only an hour late. Yeah, well, it was your fault, wasn't it? You didn't want to get tarted up and bathed and everything. Should be plenty more inside anyway. Ah, oh, well, at least there's plenty of spare seats. Evening, lads. All right. Teddy! Great to see you, mate. It's about time you came in here, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've been in before on his stag night. Hey, don't remind me of that disaster. Hey, listen, uh, Jimmy didn't charge you to get in, did he? Yes, yeah, he did. yes, he did, yeah. Oh, well, look, I've told him. How many times have I told him he doesn't charge friends of mine, right? No, look, you're all right. We're just punters like anyone else, aren't we? I mean, we are still quits, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are. Well, I can still get you a drink, can't I? Yeah, 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 I'll have a pint of lager. Yeah, me too, yeah. Mo, can you get us two pints of lager for these fellas? Put it on my tab, please. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, I'll get them. So how's things going then, eh? Bit quiet in here, isn't it? Yeah, well, eh, uh, it does get a bit quiet in midweek. I just had that Joel all up this afternoon. She's moaning about how the takings are going down all the time. I wouldn't mind, but she leaves me on my own for weeks on end, Terry. Anyway, forget about that. How's the oil business going? Eh, uh, can I have my ale on this tab all night, please? Does that go for all the tips you want to give me? <laughs> You're sharp, aren't you? Razor, I have to be in this job. Hey, Simbad, get us a bit of lemo in mine, will you? Yeah, no probs. 
Sinbad? What sort of a name's that? Well, everyone's called me a fionx, you know, ever since I started window cleaning. I wasn't very good. I used to clean them like buttholes, so Sinbad the Sailor. You know. Amazing. What's your real name? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out, isn't it? There you go. Don't get them mixed up. Don't worry. Mine's the one without the lemon. I'm slimming. Sinbad, what are you doing? You're spilling it. I know it was me who offered Bev a place to stay, but I think it'd be best if she left as soon as she can. You know, I didn't think Bev would do anything like that, go off with her sister's husband. So if you can ask around the people you know about getting out of flat. Yes, yeah, sure. Hey, you sound pretty anxious, mate. Uh, you sure you know? Don't be daft. <laughs> Lynn's the one for me. But I don't want her getting any soft ideas that Bev's moving in on me, too. Yeah. I suppose she is quite a good-looking kid, though, isn't she? You sure you couldn't, uh... Well, she is quite fit, yeah, but... Hey, knock it off. Anyway, you're the one who's most at risk. Working with her every day. Who, me? No, no way I should be so lucky, <laughs> Anyway, I'm older than you, aren't I? And what's she? Well, she's only 21, isn't she? Loads of blokes go run after young girls, Ron. Francis, as Dee Dee says, if Kim Bassinger came walking in the Astarkas, I probably wouldn't lift my head up the stock lists. That is not the impression you gave me the other week, when you told me you were somewhere you shouldn't have been with someone you shouldn't have been with. Oh, there! Oh, yeah. Well, that wasn't near as serious as I made it sound, was it? No, it's just this one down the region, you know. She keeps giving me the come on, so, uh, well, bought her a couple of berries and went back to hers for the coffee, you know. Not nothing, like. No, I'm still pure as the driven snow me, Francis. Glad to hear it, mate. See ya. Yeah, see you, Frank. what he said to you. Patsy, no. What he said to you was awful. It was a bit hurtful, yes. I was only trying to mend a few fences between you two, but, uh, listen, don't say anything more about it. It'll only make things worse. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Well, if he's too stupid to realise you're only trying to help, then he's only got himself to blame. Please, please, don't take this any further, all right? Anyway, maybe Max has got a point. Maybe we have overstayed our welcome. Maybe I should have worked harder at making a go of it in Mallorca. Maybe your mother and I should think again about living next door. No, if that's the house you want, I want you to have it. We'll see. I mean it, Dad. You're buying that house. <laughs> Message received and understood. But what about you, my darling? What are you going to do about Max's kids? Look, why don't you go in now? Your mother will wonder what on earth's going on. I don't want her to find out what Max said. She'd be far too hurt. What turned my flat to a flaming elf called the cheeky mare? I've told you, it was that smarmy punt of a what's it hairdresser, Brian Kennedy, who said it, actually. Yeah, well, I don't care who said it. Where's Barry Grant? In his office. Right. Hey, hang on, hang on. Listen, Barry is well cheesed off with Joe Altsall, going behind his back with all this soft elf club stuff. Yeah, well, if the money's right, he's not going to give a toss if I end up in the street, is he? Oh, go away. Not this time. Listen, he's been in the right mood, hasn't he, with Joe Altson ever since you sprung this on him? He's gonna fight it all the way, I'm telling you. Yeah, well, he better that. He will. I know him, don't I? Oh, come on, you two. Come on, what are you having? You know, I did to my shout. Uh, same again when you're ready, my love. This way you do your drinking, eh? I've only been here a couple of times. A large scotch, please, love. Won't be a sack, love, but I think this gentleman was first. I think that's the first time he's ever been called a gentleman. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much, madam. Uh, you know, like, you can save it first. That's very kind of you, thank you. Who's that? You just took over your Rod's old place. Trevor George. Keep the change. Do you know what else? Thanks very much. Not a bad little club, this, is it? Yeah, it'd be all right. It was a bit lively, yeah? Aye, 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 aye. Don't be putting off the new customers, you. As long as the bar stays open, eh? Cheers. <laughs> Hey, Mo, you gonna have one with me? What do you mean, a dance, a drink, a baby? Well, a drink for tonight, eh? Got a letter. Well, there's always other nights, isn't there? I'll remember that. 
Hey, listen, uh, Sinbad was telling us you've moved into number 10, Brookside Coast. That's right. Uh, nice one, yeah. Used to be my brother's place, that. And then it was me nephew and his wife's place after him. Trevor Jordash. Oh, nice, nice to meet you. Jimmy Corkill. Nice to meet you, Jimmy. I thought your name was Shackleton. I mean, Diana, that's me, uh, what's it, you know, me nephew's wife. She said that uh, she'd sold the house to someone called Shackleton. The Shackleton's dropped out, I believe. Drop it with the mortgage. All right. Send again, love, please. Uh, another one for you? Uh, no, not for me. Got to be up early in the morning. Send right. Well, surely you'll have one with me. Very nice. I will, yeah, but I'll have it later on. OK, stick it in the paper for us, will you, Mo? Yeah, that's OK. There you go, Dan. That's it. Thanks. Good night. Better be going, lads. I'll catch you again later, OK? Bye-bye. Yeah, nice cheers. to meet you. So long. Yeah. Why don't we get pushing? He's all right, Tim, isn't he? I don't know why you're talking to him or taking drinks off him. Well, what's up with you? Well, this is better company than you are. All you're doing is chatting the barmaid up. Oh, are you? Yeah. Hey, he's a nasty piece of work, that. Him? Yeah. You don't know the half of it, mate. He's been inside for battering his wife. Peter Harrison told me he's one bad man, that. Peter Harrison, that little get. He's got room to talk, ain't he? Yeah, but you listen to anyone, you. Look, I'm telling you, I've seen her half crippled and pretending she's got rheumatism. I've met her, I know what's going on. God knows what she's gonna get tonight. Have you seen the way he's been tanking up? I don't know what to do, I feel sorry for her. You don't do nothing, that's what you do. Yeah, let her get battered all over again. Oh, look, Simbad, you don't know if that's happening for definite, do you? Just stay out of it. I just wanted the pizza. He's gone shopping. Shopping? Yeah, he's gone to buy Marianne an engagement ring. Oh, well, that's a bit quick, isn't it? He's still married to Josie. That's what I told him. I said, you're rushing into things, but he's made his mind up. Oh, talk about complicating things. You know what? Sometimes I think we're better off without doing it. Hi, yeah. Sue. All right. So, how about another go and copy off tonight? Well, after last night's fiasco. Oh, come on, mate, you've got to give it time, haven't you? Oh, well, you just want to have another go at that barmaid, don't you? Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. Yeah, well, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll give it an hour or so. If nothing happens, I'm off. OK, see you later. Hey, uh, I'm going to order chippy. Do you fancy coming? No, nah, I'll just get a tin of soup or something. I've got to go and pick some money up off that Jordash fella. How much do you owe you money for? Oh, just some gardening stuff I was flogging. I thought I'd better get the money now before the busies pull him in again for battering his missus. Simbad, stay out of it. Yeah, well, the more money I take off him now, the less he's got to spend on whiskey. See you later. See ya. So, where have you been all day, like? I'm a lion, watching telly. Oh, yeah. Couldn't you have phoned or called in? Now then. Who's the lucky fella? Yeah, well, not you, that's for sure. Yeah. 42, please. You going anywhere special, Ben? I've decided, yeah. Yeah, well. Thanks very much. See ya. Turn around. So what else have you been doing all day, then? Well, I told you. Anyway, why are you so interested? Checking up on me. Yeah, well, maybe I should do, eh? What's that meant to mean? Frank told me about you and Lynn's husband. Is that right? Yeah. 
Why couldn't you have told me? I told you the other day. I was ashamed. I didn't want you knowing at all. But how could you do that to your own sister? It takes two to tango, Ron. Haven't you heard that? Yeah, but with your own sister's husband. Look, what difference does it make whose husband it is? You could be like that. I've blown it, haven't I? You want to finish it, don't you? No. No, of course I don't, but... I just wish you'd have told me, you know. Oh, can't we forget about it, Ron? It's history. It was a big mistake. Have you had any luck finding me a flat? No, I'm still asking round. It'll be different once we have a place of our own. Someone we can meet properly. Our own little love nest, eh? Children, right, yeah. So where are you taking me tonight? I can't, love. Not tonight. Why not? Well, I'm comparing down the Legion. It's all arranged. Oh, not again. Well, I get all dolled up and oh, brilliant. Do I have to wear my uniform? It's a careers night. You want to look your best. Yes, love. You look nice and smart. Can't you come, Dad? No, darling, I'm sorry, I can't. Why not? Because the school knows all about us and he's not supposed to be here. Yes. Come on, Rachel, hurry. We're going to be late. Have a nice time. See ya. See you later. Bye. Bye. Decent. Oh, go on, Ron. Give them a ring and tell them... tell them anything. Can't be done, love. To hell with them. They're all fogies and you don't need them. Oh, screw them and let's go to that club down the parade. What the laws? Behave yourself. I couldn't go there with you anyway, could I? Everyone would clock us straight off. You said that you liked being seen out with me. It made you feel good. Not on my own doorstep, though. OK. I'll go on my own. Hey, I'm not having that. Oh, yeah? What aren't you having? Well, I mean, it's... You know, just a copping off place, isn't it? God, you don't trust me at all, do you? Bev, it's not that, but well, I don't want you bothered, you know. You might get pestered by drunks and no marks. All I want is a bit of a dance and some music and that. On your own, no. Look, love, I'll make a deal with you, all right? Forget about tonight, and I'll take it out one night next week, anywhere you like. As long as it's not the lost like. <laughs> Promise you, anywhere you like. Well, I'm definitely going out tonight, with or without you. See you tomorrow, then, eh? Bev! Hello, love. Did your mum say what time she'd be back? If it's late, I'll make her something to eat. Look, just leave mum alone. Bev, I'm only asking what time she said she'd be back. Why is mum covered in bruises? Don't be silly. I'm not stupid. I'm not 14 anymore. I saw them. I saw what you did to her. It was a misunderstanding. Your mum upset me, but she knows I didn't mean her any harm. Keep away from me. Love, I want to... Leave me alone and leave mum alone. Beth, I want to explain to you that... Leave us alone and get out of this house! Will you listen to what I'm saying, Beth? You should be locked up. You should be in prison! What are you doing? Get out or I'll call the police. No, love. Get out! Don't you even think about calling the police to me. Do you hear? Don't, Don't you dare! Don't you dare! It's Beth, that loony of an owl fella. Do you reckon she go around? Oh, I don't know. I can't just sit here doing nothing, can I? Oh, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll just watch him, OK? You do it, I told and stay here! Stay there. Hey, Beth, Michael's here. I just come round to see if you were coming round to us. Now, what about this revision of yours, love? Shouldn't you be doing that? I bet you did more revision than this one's doing. I keep telling her, no A-levels, no university. Um, I'll come now if you don't mind. Now, promise me, promise me that you'll do some studying tomorrow, eh? And no more rowing about it, all right, love? No. Good girl. 
Have a nice time. Was he hitting you in there? No. Are you sure about that? No, I just went mad. Well, because you didn't do your revision? Well, it was just something he said in front of you. Something to say. He went mad because I told him that I knew he'd been hitting the wall. What, are you still doing it? Yeah. She should never let him back in. Well, why doesn't she kick him out? Well, it's not that easy. It terrorises her. She don't say a word out of place. Well, he's never hit you or your sister, has he? No, he's never touched me or Rachel. Not in the way you mean, anyway. What do you mean? I'll just leave it, Mike. Look, I'm feeling a bit cold. Can we just keep walking? And then back to yours for a coffee? Yeah, sure. I'll stay in ours tonight if you want. I'll see. I don't know. Friend's house. Where's Beth? Where is she? Out. Is she all right? Have you touched her? If you've touched her, I'll. You know what? Call the police. That's what Beth said she'd do. Because you've been talking to her, haven't you? Tell her about these little bruises, and these bruises, and these, and these. Why do you insist on making trouble again? Oh, no. Parents have to watch those blasted game shows all night. They haven't fallen out with Dad again. No. Can't expect them to sit there in silence because you want to read. No. Look, it's the weekend. Why not call a truce, eh? Sit down, talk things over. Haven't we said it all? Well, could at least try. After I've had my bath. Yeah, no, we flame them, though, should be, though. Oh, you're talking the devil, here he is. Hi, Sinbad. All right, Mo. Hey, you've been sitting here for ages. How am I supposed to cop off with all these pairs of birds when I'm on my own, eh? He's only gone and done what I was scared of, hasn't he? Who? That nut at Trevor Jordash. I just went round for my money and I saw him battering his wife. He was laying into it. I'm a witness. What am I going to do? You're going to do nothing. And what if you do stop him from belting it? You'll probably just wind him up, Mo. Hiya. Pantalaga, is it? Yeah, thanks, Mo. Hey, uh, hey, what are we going to do? Split that pair up there or what? Hiya, Sinbad. Hello. You're the fellow from the garage, aren't you? That's right. You're from the training post, aren't you? Yeah. What's it like, then, this place? Ah, it's all right. I mean, I've only been here a few times. Not interested in splitting a pair of pairs up now, then. It suits me. I've never been here before. I wasn't sure whether they'd be worth it, you know, on my own life. Oh, well, it's all right. I mean, an old mate of mine runs the place. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to came now. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah? Can I buy a drink? Thank you. 
pull yourself together as the police. Tell them to go away. Tell them to mind their own bloody business. It was a toad. Go. I don't hate Matthew and Emily, you know. No, I you know. I just wish you... I wish you weren't so emotional about it all. I wish you'd think through the practicalities. How would we manage with three children here? We'd find a way. Look, I just want my children here. Here and not in America. I hate this. What? Us falling out. Well, I didn't want to fall out. I know, but... Why is it always Susanna who causes it? It's not. Oh, come on, Max. Think of the amount of time she's done things that have rebounded on us. It's been a long week. Let's just forget about her and all this, shall we? <laughs> just relax. I hate it when we fall out. Let's not do it anymore. I just want us to have our own baby. I'm not having you seducing me so you can have another baby. Max, I'm not. Well, that's what it feels like. It just doesn't seem right. Oh, I'm sorry. Max? Two teenage daughters. And are they aware that it's been a violent row at this place of residence? Have you any marks of violence? No, I'm fine. Any bruises? No, cuts? No, you're absolutely all right. I'm really sorry that you've been called out. It's just a misunderstanding. Yeah. Well, we'll say good night then. Thank you. This is Jordash. Why didn't you tell them the truth? Was your friend from next door, wasn't it? He's not my friend. He's an interfering little swine. He called the police, didn't he? I don't know. Yes, he did. He called them out. It makes a difference when there's something worth coming for. Oh, why? And what would that be? Well, how about buying a drink for the certain barmaid when she gets off work? <laughs> In about three and a half hours. It's all right. I'm going nowhere else. Right. Gotta make a move. Oh, you're not going, are you? Well, thanks for the dance and the drink and everything, but I've got to be up in the morning. Yeah, me too, but you sure don't want another drink? I'm fine, thanks. Well, uh, how about coming back tomorrow for a coffee, then? Yeah, great. Uh, it'd have to be a quick one, though. Yeah, hang on a minute. I'll go and tell me, mate. Sinbad, I'm getting off. You're early, aren't you? Yeah, well, I think I'm on it, yeah. I think I am, I know. She's working. Only till two o'clock. Yeah, well, she's got to do the glasses and all the rest of it. Is she working? Well, you let me decide that, all right? All right, well, best of luck, eh? You're right.
Rachel. I'm cold. You're going to warm me up, eh? Just give me a cuddle like you used to. You lie down. That's a good girl. I used to lie awake in prison wishing I could give you a cuddle, do you know? Did you? I did, love. Hundreds and hundreds of times. Hundreds and hundreds of times. So you don't want another one? Um, no, thanks. Keeps me awake. Yeah, I'm awake now. I'm not as tired as I was when I first left the club. Yeah, but you've got an early start in the morning, haven't you? Yeah, well, I'm used to it now. Uh, I'll manage. Um, sorry, Terry. Sorry, yeah. Uh, I thought we were getting on. It's OK. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, I've uh, just misjudged things, haven't I? It would have been OK in different circumstances, but unfortunately, these aren't the right circumstances. Oh, sorry. I mean, we did have a laugh and that, but... Well, that's all it can be. I did only come up for a cup of coffee. That's all I asked you to be here for. Yeah. But well, I would like to see you again, no? I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, you're not married, are you? Well, I'm not, but my fella is. And thanks for the coffee and the drinks and that, but, well, this fella of mine, it's serious. Can't win them all. We'll see you around then. Not much chance of not doing. <laughs> Thanks for walking us back. Ah, you're welcome. No hard feelings, eh? No. See ya. Hey. Hey. Hey, what do you think you're playing at with her? What are you going on about? Hey, Ron, don't be so soft. I saw you going into his flat, linking arms, being all lovey dovey. What's going on? There's nothing going on, but is all this. Look, will you be quiet? You're going to wake up Frank and Lynn. You go out one night and you know and what happens here. You tap off for the first fella you meet. I might have known. Oh, I get the picture. I know you said he was married. I'm getting off. Leave me out of this. Look, all he did was ask me for a cup of coffee and walk me back. Now look what you've done. Hey, I'll see you about this in the morning. <sighs> sure you're all right? Look, you can stay in ours if you want. Peter won't mind. No, I'll be all right. Thanks.
Do you want a drink, sweetheart? Hey, you should have something. He's coming down. I'll take her into the extension. I'm all right. Come on, Rachel. God, it's a bloody boring place, this, isn't it? Do you want any breakfast? Since when have I ever eaten breakfast, my darling? Where are the girls? They're in the extension, playing something, I think. Best you'll be doing a revision. It's important she gets good grades in these air levels. She's working hard, or trying to. And what's that supposed to mean, my sweet? My darling, I was just saying to your mother about the importance of your passing your exams. Were you? I'll do all right. See that? All the confidence of the jaw dashes. <laughs> so come on, how did you get on with that bedroom, Ron? Oh, what sure. you wouldn't believe what happens at Look, uh, I'll tell you after all right. Hello, Ron. Morning, lads. All right. Hey, just saying about last night, no means. Hey, it. listen. I said I'll see you after all right. Oh, right, yeah, there. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey, uh, listen, Terry, uh, mate, I just wanted to say about last night, you know. It's all right, Ron, you don't have to explain to me. No, but, you know, I didn't want you getting all the wrong end of the stick, like. It's just that, well, young Bev hasn't worked for me for long, you know. <laughs> Ron, it's all right, nothing happened between us. She's all yours. Hey? Oh, you think me and Bev... No, no! It's just that Frank Rogers asked me to keep an eye on her. You know, with her being, like, Lynn's sister and, you know, well, a young girl out on her own and all that, like. Ron, I'm not soft, and you shouldn't be either. If you're on with her, you should be careful. Don't go <laughs> your own doorstep. Terry, honestly, mate, you're barking up the wrong tree. Anyway, she was not an old fellow like me, would she? God, I'm old enough to be a partner. How are you, Dad? How are you, love? I didn't, uh, I didn't know you were in today. Eh, uh, yeah, just a couple of hours. Is there uh, bad minds in the shop? No, she's, um, uh, late. Oh, all right, then. See you after. Yeah, ta-da, love. Hello, London says, you know, Ron. But don't worry. I'll keep that short. Maybe you'll be late for work. Don't feel well. What's up? I don't think I could face a day at work. <sighs> What's the matter? She uh, says she's pat me. Well, she wasn't sick when she was upstairs a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, well, I am now. Do you want a drink, Bev? No, at all. Has it uh, just come on you, like? Well, that sometimes happens to me. I get ready for school and then I feel lousy. Katie, uh, do you want to go and clean your room, love? Oh, she's at the weekend, Dad. Revision, then. Must have loads of that. So, look, I work in a doctor's surgery and I see people swinging the lead every day. You never want to believe me, do you? I always want to believe you. It's just that... It's just that nothing. I don't feel well and that's the end of it. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to go to the toilet, if that's all right with you. Look, uh, i got to get out for a bit, just to clear my head. Have you got a few bob you could lend us? That's what I have. Well, that's not going to buy very much, is it? Here. Take this. No, no, darling, I can't. Take it. Please. Please? Oh, well, things are improving. Thanks. I'll see you later. I want to go out, Mum. OK, I'll uh, think of somewhere. I want to go out soon. Now, I want to be out. Sit down a minute. Please. Look. Whatever... Whatever happened last night, I want you to know it wasn't your fault. What are you talking about? It wasn't your fault. Well, it's not my fault. I haven't done anything. We know you haven't. Your dad, last night, he's got nothing to do with you. He 
He's my dad and I love him and I don't want him to go away. He won't do anything more to you. I'm sorry I wasn't there to stop him. He didn't do anything. He's my dad. Rachel, listen. I know what happened. Because he did the same to me before he went to prison. But you've got to understand. None of it's your fault. I didn't want him to be like that. I trusted him. I said he needed a cuddle. Oh, shit. Now, don't you worry. Mommy won't let him touch you again. Ever. What do you think of that? <laughs> oh, sorry, Mick, I've already spoken for. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. It's, it's for Marianne, you know. I oh, know, it's very nice. I made up for you. Look, I better get back to work. See you. Yes, yes. yes. An engagement ring, Mick? I know what you're going to say, Sin, but the kids do get on with it, and I wouldn't risk their happiness for anything. Yeah, but... No but, Sin. Look, I know it sounds soppy and all that, but Sin, but I just know. And I know that she feels the same way about me. I'm so made up about it. I can't wait to see her face when I ask her to marry me. Come on, Bev. What is it? You in some sort of trouble? She all right? Katie. And now, tidy your room again. Are you pregnant? Oh, are you? It cut me wrist if I was pregnant. Well, I know you're not really sick, so what is it? It's this fella. The one I've been seeing. We had a big argument. Where in the club? Well, it doesn't matter where. We just had a bust up and it's finished. I didn't think he was like that. Jealous. I thought he was mature. I don't want to see him again. Ever. I, I got you here to ask you to reconsider. I don't want you to take Matthew and Emily across the pond. Oh, it's not as if they were going with complete strangers. They get on very well with Andrew. It's quite apparent you all do. <laughs> Which is why we're going with him. If you go, I could stop your maintenance. My maintenance? It's the children's money, thank you very much. But the maintenance, along with the family allowance, would hardly get you to America. Truth of the matter is, Max, Andrew offered to pay for the children's flights, but I decided to use my savings. But if you want to embarrass yourself by stopping the uh, children's I'm money... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean any of it. You know I didn't. Well, don't say it, then. He's up in front of the telly with a few drinks, eh? Pardon? Oh, yes. Nice way to spend a bank holiday, eh? A few drinks. Thank you. 38 p change, thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. He seems all right, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, what was that you saying about Bev? Oh, yeah, um, well, she hasn't turned in because, well, she's a bit upset. She's finished with this bloke she's been seeing. Finished with him? That's what she says, yeah. Just as well, anyway, apparently he's married. Oh! <laughs> was he? Yeah. She should be all right by tomorrow. So, uh, where does she know, like? She's moping around in ours. Me and Lynn are off to Southport for the day. We've asked her to come along, but she's not interested. You're, um, Katie with her? No, she's off somewhere. Anyway, I hope it hasn't upset your day too much. No, no. <laughs> Fortunately, we haven't been too busy, you know. <laughs> See you, mate. Yeah, ta -da. Much doing down the shop today, so I've closed up early. It's too many bank holidays, if you ask me. <laughs> so, how are you? Oh, you know. <sighs> Stay to this place, eh? I'll have to get it cleaned up. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, love. No, I wasn't having a go, honest. No. <laughs> Bev hasn't turned in today. Don't know where I'm up to. She just keeps hanging around Frank Rogers' place. You ought to go and sort it out. Hey. Well, you can't afford to lose any more stuff, can you? So, uh, do you reckon I should go around and see her then? Yeah, will you turn the telly back on again? Yeah, sure. All I wish is that I had a bit more time to discuss it with you. The outcome would still have been the same. 
that you're making decisions without me. <laughs> you walked out on us, Max. What do you expect? <sighs> I never wanted you to go. You did what you felt like at the time. I just can't bear the thought of you all going. You've got to look at it from where I am, Max. I'm not getting any younger, and I don't want my life to waste away as a divorcee with two growing children. Oh, I see. Is that what all this is about? You finding a new partner? No. I'm happy with Andrew, but I'm not sure if I want to spend the rest of my life with him. The year in America seems as good a test as any for a trial run. I can't believe you're saying this. Why? Second best is better than nothing. Second best? Yes. I still hurt, Max. You know I do. It's not just the children going, is it? Andrew will suffice, but I'd have you back tomorrow. You know I would. Susanna, please. Please what? Don't tell the truth. The truth is, Max, you know I'm still in love with you. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I'd say somewhere deep in there, there's just a little flicker of something for me. You've never really stopped fancying me, have you, Max? Look, I don't think you can say that sort of thing. I know it, Max. The other Christmas in the hotel room. When your wife was all alone, and you were with me. Well, I'd sooner forget that. Really? We could have had a relationship back on the agenda. We shouldn't be talking like this. Of course not. You've got Patricia, I've got Andrew. And who knows? If I'd become Mrs. Andrew Carroll, we may never have to talk like this ever again. Oh, come on, Bev. You made a show of me the other night. Bev, are you going to let me in or what? Come on, man. Hey, yeah, you can't do that. Not round here. Sometimes I just don't care. So, listen, why did you let Terry Sullivan pick you up? I never. We just had a laugh, and I didn't want to walk down that dark pathway by myself. Well, you wouldn't want anything to happen to me, would you? No, but well, what went on in the flat like? Nothing. You made me a coffee. People do, you know. Yeah. I suppose I was acting a bit like a jealous fool, wasn't I? Mm. It was just that... Well, you'd only gone a couple of hours and I missed you like mad. And the way Frank was talking, I thought you'd give me the push. I thought you'd done the same to me. No chance. Mm. How do you fancy consummating our getting back together? As soon as we can. Come on, then. No time like the present. What are you? You're joking, aren't you? No. Well, there's no one in. But this is Frank's place. And you want to wait for permission? Come on, they won't be back for ages. Bev! something I threw on, you know. <laughs> well, it must be ESP then, cos, uh, you're dressed for the occasion. What occasion? I will see. I'll tell you what, I'm not doing it with my apron on. I feel like a Freemason. Look, um, I'm really made up the way things are going for us. Well, between us. 
And uh, well, I get the feeling that you think the same about me as I do about you. You're not trying to let me down gently here, are you, Mick? No, no. Just the opposite. I know it's not the most uh, romantic of surroundings and everything, but I'm not waffle when I'm nervous. What do you think? Mick. The fella said I could take you back and get it enlarged or made tomorrow if it doesn't fit. It's an engagement ring. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. They'll still get it to fit. No, I mean... I can't take it. Oh, hold on, look. Uh, it's a proposal of marriage. Me and you, if you love me. I know. I can't, Mick. Look, we'll talk about it, OK? It's not real espresso, but it's dead frothy. So, you take one spoon of coffee, three spoons of sugar and some of that, and stir it up for ages. Three sugars? God, we to go mad. You saw me doing this. Uh, one sugar will do you, what you take. <laughs> Dad, checking up on how many sugars you were having. <laughs> Hi, love. Uh, I've just come round for the money for the garden and stuff. You know the weed killing that. If you've got it, mate. Oh, I'll just go and get it for you. Okay. It's on the side there. Came round the other night and there was a bit of a commotion, you know. I didn't know what oh. it's enough. Oh, it was nothing. <sighs> See you again. See ya. What are you two looking so miserable about? We're okay. Where did you get to? You know, that colour really doesn't suit you. You used to be bright and cheerful. You need to liven up. Clothes say a lot about a person, you know. Vitality. But all this dark stuff. I wear dark because my mood is dark. And who can blame me? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Beth, your father's tired. Who bloody told you I was tired? I can speak for myself, thanks. She's only trying to keep the peace. Again? Keep the peace? You'd make a saint lose his patience. Trevor, please don't get upset. <sighs> you know... I wonder sometimes what you've been saying to her. It wasn't always like this, you know. We used to have happy times. All those holidays away together, playing as a family. Look at it now. <laughs> People trying to tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're right. I am tired. I'll go and lie down. Mandy, love, it would be nice if you could follow me up. Give me a bit of comfort. Look, um, it's a 
about Bev. I need to talk to you. Things are going haywire. She's only a kid. Dee, will you listen to me for just a minute? Please. Me and Bev. Ron, don't tell me you don't get on. You need that girl in the shop, so if you're going to tell me you're going to get rid of her, don't. You'd be a fool. Anyway, you wouldn't manage without her. You're all right, Dee. I'm sorry, Beth. For what? For letting him back in, for... Oh, I don't know. I can take the beatings, but I can't bear the thought of you and Rachel suffering again. Don't say that. You mustn't say you can take the beatings, ever. You can't accept what he's wanting to dole out. What he sees fit. We've got to stay strong for Rachel's sake. We said we'd make sure that he never touched her again. And how? Contact the Shackletons, call the police. Oh. So the white flag's up, is it? Yeah, no, no, of course not. I feel useless. He'll find us again if we move, and I just feel as if nobody can protect us from him. So? So we get rid of him forever. No, I shouldn't have said that. But you're right, Mum. It's the only way. It won't be that simple. It's the only way, Mum. Beth understand what I'm saying here. Yeah. We're talking about taking control of our own lives and protecting Rachel's. I won't expect you to have anything to do with it. But you can't do it on your own. We've got to look at it as though... as though we're putting a beast down. It won't be that easy. Oh, my God, what are we saying? We're talking about killing someone. It's either him or us. This is it. This is how we get rid of him. What, poison him? Well, it's clean. I don't know. We'll spike his whiskey or something. When he's drunk. 
Yeah, but you, you know you'll taste it. Not when it's blind drink, you won't. Well, how much will it take? A, a, a cup full, a gallon? I don't know. As much as it takes. What the hell are you wasting electricity for? Sorry. And where's Rachel? Oh, I've just taken her to her friend. She's staying there for a couple of days. Well, doesn't she have school tomorrow? Here, let me. Who are these people that she's staying with? Do we know anything about them? But they're nice, and she gets them along with Helen. Listen, I wish you'd wait till I'm out before you do dusting and hoovering. You know how much I hate it. Sorry. But listen, stop saying sorry. And don't be so bloody pathetic. I'm not going to hurt you, you know. Bye. Hello, love. Hello. Oh, look at this. I'm snowed under with paperwork from Dee Dee's florist. You're going to have to say something to Dee Dee or Ron. Well, I'd help you out myself. Only I've got enough on my plate. I thought your advertising empire wasn't too busy. Well, that's the trouble I'm working on making it busy. All this business with Max and his kids didn't help. It'll all sort itself out. You'll see. Oh, I'm not that optimistic. I've just asked Susanna around for a little chat. Well, Max won't be too happy with that, will he? Hello, my darling. Oh, hello. Well, what do you hope to achieve by talking to her? Talking to who? Patricia's invited Susanna around for a little chat while Max is out. Oh, Mum, you make it sound so clandestine. Well, it is. <laughs> you want to be very careful. I have to agree with your mother. What are you going to say to her? I don't know. But I've got to do something. This whole business is coming between us. I didn't realise there'd be so many. Uh, well, what you'd have to do, you'd have to fold each individual leaflet and put it in an envelope. It must be thousands. It'll take me ages. Yeah, well, anything's got to be better than lugging them freebie newspapers around, doesn't it? Aye, aye. All right, mate. What's all this? This is the start of Anna's first million, mate. Cash in hand, no questions asked. Anyway, I'll see you later. ta -da. Bye. I must be crazy. There are thousands here. How much does it pay? Ten pounds for every ten thousand envelopes completed. Scandalous. Well, it's like Sinbad says. I'll be a millionaire by the time I'm 60. The shop is doing fine. But there are masses of invoices coming in, and there's some paperwork I haven't even started to open yet. Well, let's have a look, then. Dried flower supplier, and this is but. Oh, Dee Dee, I am sorry. I shouldn't be bothering you with all this. Jean, it's not your fault. Ron was right all along. I should never have opened up the flower shop. It's just work and papers and paper. Oh, that that oh, shop's too much for you. No, I'll be all right. If you just give me a couple of more days, I'll be all right, Jean. A couple more days won't solve anything. He'll still have the pressures of the job. You are just not up to it. Look, I really do think you should consider letting the business go. I can't, Jean. I put every penny I've saved over all these years into it. Forget about the money. It's your health we're talking about. Look at you. You don't even want to answer the door, let alone face customers and, and supplies people. I want to go mad. Your plans on that place. Do you really think Ron wants you here, stuck in the house? Don't tell me it's convenient to him to have you tucked away and left to get on with his own life. I can't. I can't give the shot. It's all I've got. Hiya. Oh, you frightened me then. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, I'll just um, decanting it down. Makes it easier to use. Yeah, I know. We bought some as well. Just hope the stuff works. Um, how's your mum? I guess you heard about me calling the police the other night. Yeah. Thanks. You did what you thought was right, but 
I don't think you should get involved. Hello. Hiya. You wouldn't fancy helping me earn a fortune, would you? Doing what? She's got this wonderful new job of stuffing leaflets and envelopes. Every 19 million, she gets 10 pence. What? Well, if it isn't the good neighbour, I hope you're not thinking of dialing 999 because I'm breathing the same air as you. I was just concerned, that's all. There was no need. Just a difference of opinion, that's all. Everything's fine, honestly. You don't have to explain anything to him. Trevor, please. I, uh, I think we'd better go now. Yeah, I think you'd better. I'll give you a call if I have any problems. And in the meantime, can you mind your own business? I'll see you again. See ya. And good day to you, too. Do you have to be so abusive? Why the hell did you have to move to a place like this? I do my best and I have to deal with scum like that. You're gonna have to give me some money. Well, I've hardly got a penny. You got family allowance today, didn't you? <laughs> but we need that to live on. Everything is a problem with you, isn't it? I'm gonna have a drink. I don't suppose you want one, do you? I like me. Hey, are you giving Marianne the engagement ring yet? Yeah, I think I screwed up, mate. Rushing things a bit, you know. Why? Well, to be quite honest with you, I think I've scared her off. All right, Mick. All right, Ron. Hey, I believe the police were round Mandy Jordish the other night, weren't they? Yeah, so I yeah. yeah, well, if they'd have asked the residents before they opened the refuge for Bassett Wise, we wouldn't have the likes of that Trevor Jordash hanging around there, would we? Well, you can't blame the woman, though, Ron, can you? Hello, Hello love. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you then, Ron? Uh, 89 for you, please, Michael. Thank you. And 84 for you, Sin. See you later. Oh. Cheers, mate. See you later. Ta -da. Ta -da. Take it easy. Can I have a quick word, Ron? Yeah, of course you can, love. Fire away. Well, it's about Dee Dee. I've just been to see her and, well, quite frankly, I think she's getting worse. Oh, she'll be up and about in a few days. I'm sorry, Ron. If that's what you think, you are in for a big disappointment. I really think you should call your GP out again. She's getting more depressed, and whatever it is the doctor's putting her on is having no effect. Yeah, yeah, well, I suppose you're right, yeah. And I am finding it difficult to manage in the florist on my own. I'm going to need some time off to move into the bungalow. Yeah. OK, Jean, yeah, thanks a lot, love. Uh, I'll get it all sorted, OK? Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, little boy. Yeah, look, Bev, uh, Jean's just been telling me she's been to see Dee Dee and, well, she's not getting any better. She probably needs me. So you're giving me the push? No, no, I'm not saying that, but well, I think we should cool her for a while, you know, just till she gets a bit better. And I've just found the perfect place that would have done us for our love nest, but I'll forget it, eh? Love nest? Yeah, otherwise known as my new flat. Look... <laughs> I'm not saying that I want to finish it, you know. Well, then, come and see the place. It's cosy there, and um, we'll be able to do everything in private. All right. We'll go around and see it when I've finished here. Can I get you a drink or something? Oh, no, thank you. I'm going straight out from here. Right. Hello, Susanna. Hello. Well, Jean and I won't be here much longer. Fingers crossed we're moving into the bungalow next door. Oh, that'll be nice. Yes, yes, the, the garden's just about the right size for me to handle. And as soon as I can, I shall get my aerial erected and set up my radio equipment. Dad. What? Could, um, Susanna and I... Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Sorry, my love, I, uh, I forgot it was a bit of a powwow. Right, I'll, uh, see you on. So, I take it this is about the usual subject? I wanted to see if there was any way that we could work things out. Meaning? If, if I'm honest, I don't think that it's in the best interests of your children or Thomas for them to live here with Max and I. And? If you... If you didn't go to the States, then there wouldn't be any tug of love, which would almost certainly mean tears. Hold on, what you mean is... I don't go to the States so it doesn't disrupt your relationship with Max and Thomas. That's not what I said. <laughs> That's a rough translation. You'd prefer it, of course, if I sat at home and found a man who didn't even want to move outside of this area. I'm not trying to interfere with your personal life. Well, unfortunately for you, Patricia, my personal life is still linked with Max's and consequently with yours. I am taking the children to America and it will only be for one year. That's all. Well, I might have considered letting them stay here with Max. 
But it's obvious you don't want them. Look, Max is having a great deal of difficulty coming to terms with all this. Yes, and Max also knows how much all this is upsetting you. It's not upsetting me. Really? He told me how concerned he was for you the other day. The other day? Oh, didn't he tell you? We had a little tater tate yesterday, cleared the air over a few things. Really? Mm. And again, I'd have thought with you knowing them so well, you'd have guessed. Life's full of surprises. <laughs> isn't it just? What surprises me, though, is your attitude to all this. Why? Well, I thought you'd have loved me being in America. And then you would have felt much more secure having Max all to yourself. Sorry, I can't stop. I've got a dinner date. Bye. I was watching that. Sorry, you didn't realize. What are you staring at? I've got it. She shouldn't be going out buying drinks. She's too young. Okay, no one cares these days. First impressions of this vast country are somewhat confusing. Everywhere, the old and the new sit side by side on the moving transport. However, it's an education and one soon learns the tiring sidestep and the ability to move the head 360 degrees. Confident then of being a Thank you, Miss Wynn. The tourist can finally begin to enjoy the city. Just one tip, when crossing a road, never ever pause to look up. Leave your admiration for the minaret or dome for the relative safety of the pavement. First stop must be the well, don't just stand there like a level. <laughs> Get me some water with it. Any word from Mario? Try calling at work, but she's been out all day. I definitely think I've scared her off, sir. All because of this, mate. Hello. Marianne. Uh, well, uh, I've got a few more minutes to kill, so uh, I'll see you later. Ta -da. So, how are you? OK. You? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm trying to call you all day. Yeah, I've been out. Busy. Sorry for leaving you like that the other day. You don't have to explain. I do. I owe you that at least. No, you don't. I goofed. I got carried away with things I shouldn't have done. I thought, well, we're in love and, as usual, I screwed things up. No, Mick. I do love you, but... But you don't want to marry me. Yes. No! I mean... It's too early for us. I I'm still trying to get over all that mess with Ellis. I want to be sure. Of what? Us. I do love you, but it just seems so quick to go from free and single to wife and mum with two kids. I want... I need to get used to it gradually. And, well, Leo and Gemma need to get used to me as well. Look, I never thought I'd do this, but... I gave up the chance of a good job in Leeds for you. When? A couple of weeks ago. I was headhunted. I turned it down. Well, you've got a good job here, haven't you? Oh, it'll do. It's not really stretching me. I'll be waiting years for promotion, and I've still got ambitions. Look, that's irrelevant for now. What I'm trying to say is, despite the offer of a good job, I wanted to be near you. So you're still going out with me, then? Yeah, of course I am. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll take this back. I'll get you something else. 
No. Let's see if we can um, get it to the third finger left hand, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll open the back door. No, I mean out of this place. It's too claustrophobic. You shouldn't go out. You might fall. I'm going to the toilet. And then I'm going out. Mandy, get me a drink of water, will you? <laughs> Hello. Oh, the door opens. Thought it was probably you two. <laughs> Welcome to our as yet um, empty abode. Thank <laughs> you. Your father tells me your little meeting with Susanna was hardly a peace summit. No. Maybe I should have listened to you both. I have to say something, but I probably made it all much worse. Oh, I shouldn't think so. I can't see Susanna cancelling America just because you asked her to. And did you ask her? I had to, Mum. I don't want my life disrupted again. Anyway, what would Thomas make of it all? Suddenly another two people vying for Max's minor attention. Yes, I'm very fond of those kids, but it would be better if they weren't exactly foisted on us. The only problem being that Max is their father, and he happens to want Emily and Matthew with him. Oh, don't talk to me about Max for the moment, please. Did you tell him you'd seen Susanna? No. Apparently he had a private meeting with her the other day. Perhaps it would be better if you let them sort it out between them. I can't, Mum, not behind my back. This happened the Christmas before last, when I found out I was ill. He was meeting her in secret, and I got so angry and so bloody paranoid that I just threw him out. Good Lord, Patricia, why? Well, what was I expected to do, Dad? Either he's honest with me or he's not. I can't stand duplicity. Look, I know it would be easier if Max's children didn't live with you, but... I know, Mum. But the trouble is, I can't help feeling that underneath it all, Susanna's just trying to get her claws back into him. She gets him into these secret meetings, and he spends more and more time with her, and... it's exactly what happened last time. Now then, James, I'll have a large brandy, please. Right. Hey, we'll have to charge it for a single. Hey, hang on, the sign on the door says the first drink's free. Yeah, yeah, and in bar parlance, that means a single, none of your doubles, like. Yeah, I'll just have a pint of lager then, please. She working on her own tonight? <sighs> well, it looks like it, doesn't it? No, no one else gonna know. Like you? Well, no one in particular, you know. Oh, no one like Mo, you mean? Aye, 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 got the hots for her, have you? I just wanted a <laughs> chat, that's oh, all. Oh, did you? Well, you'd had a look, because she's phoned in sick, and anyway, she's married, I think. She's married? See any wedding ring? All I know is she's spoken for. Okay. Oh, I might as well go home and watch the telly. That finish your pint, will you? Looks as if it's going to be dead in here again. Might as well keep me company, won't you? Sadly, the cope of Cabana, is it? I'm talking to Barry. Barry's going to have to get him in somehow, you know. Have to have one of these rave nights or something. Rave nights? You're not getting all them kids in with the drugs and everything, are you? We can control it, can't we, if we let them in? Oh, can you? It's easier said than done, mate. Hey, and have you heard any more about me getting thrown out of the caretaker's flat? No. I've told you, haven't I? Hey, me and the boss, we've got plans. And they don't involve any of that health club garbage that Joe also has been going on about, are they? Oh, aye, aye. Someone's made an early start. The state of it. A large scotch, please, and a glass of water. Don't you think you've had enough already? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Hey, sorry. I could lose my license, you know. Come on, on your way. <laughs> on your way? Don't be throwing up on the floor, either. You know what? I went round to theirs the other night. And you know him? He was giving his missus a terrible line. Someone even called her busies. Oh, so I don't know what that close is coming to anymore. Time was when respectable people used to live there. Have you seen it now? Thieves, rapists, scum like that beating his wife up. Yeah, well, I just hope you haven't put him in another knack. And he goes home and takes it out on his missus. Well, what do you think? It's nice, yeah. Very nice. Do you think it's um, a bit too expensive? Well, it was a little more than I expected, yeah. But that's ideal, though, isn't it? I mean, nice bathroom and kitchen and, um... Bedroom's just big enough. <laughs> yeah. 
I can't really afford the £200 deposit, though, so um, it's up to you to decide whether or not I'm worth it. <laughs> You're worth it, all right. You sure? Of course, I'm sure. And I, uh, let's get you moved in as quickly as possible, eh? so we can get on with Chris and the place. Is this really what you want, Ron? I mean, with Dee Dee being... Hey, hey, hey. Let's forget about Dee Dee, OK? I just want this to be a place where I can come and relax and forget all about my worries. Do what I can. <laughs> where the hell is he? Anything could have happened to him. Well, isn't that what we wanted? Beth, if he collapses in the street and he's taken to hospital, they'll find out what we've done. I hate him. I hate him for how he's got us, what he's forced us to do. I'll have to go and look for him. Where? Out. Somewhere, anywhere. I don't know. Well, I'll come with you then. Oh, oh, God. Oh, I'm in agony. Oh. Oh. Lie down. Oh. Trevor! Oh, shut up! Oh. <sighs> 